Hey, what's going on, everybody? Um, I haven't actually done a podcast episode in a while, but today we're back here with a very special guest of mine, Dr. Mike Zaro. How are you doing, Dr. Mike? Hey, Jen. How are you tonight? I'm good. I'm good. Um, so Dr. Mike is a professor at my PT school, University of Maryland, Baltimore, but he's also the team PT at um, University of Maryland College Park for the Terrapins. And so that's where I went to undergrad. And if I'm not mistaken, is that where you went to undergrad as well? Yep. I also went there. Okay, cool. Yeah. So um, I guess in a way, this episode is brought to you guys by two uh, Terps. So um, yeah, I think there's a lot that we can learn from Dr. Mike today because of what kind of uh, field he works in. And so if you don't mind just introducing yourself briefly and just walking us through what a typical day looks like for you, I think that'd be awesome. Sure. Um, so as I said, I went to the University of Maryland College Park for undergrad. I graduated in 2009 with a bachelor's in kinesiology, uh, then went on to University of Maryland at Baltimore for PT school, uh, finishing there in 2012. Uh, the first couple of years of my career, I worked for MedStar Health um, with their outpatient rehab network um, at offices and only in Federal Hill uh, in Baltimore. Uh, during that time, I was um, one of the first participants in what was the, what ultimately became their sports residency. I went through it while it was going through the accreditation process, um, and I did that because I ultimately knew that I wanted to work in sports PT. I uh, wanted to advance my education, ultimately work more, my way up to working in a team setting um, with either collegiate or professional athletes. And so I felt that doing um, a residency would be the best way to get a combination of mentoring and the structured education to help um, kind of accelerate my career and get me prepared for those types of positions. Um, so shortly after finishing uh, that program, I was fortunate enough to get a position with Loyola University in Maryland, being the team PT uh, there, uh, where I was for three years. Um, during that period, I was also uh, lucky enough to be invited back as an adjunct faculty member at the PT school. So I started coming back a couple times a month, helping predominantly in anatomy and musculoskeletal courses. And a few years later, um, a position opened up where I was invited to apply to come back as a full-time faculty member, uh, so having a more significant responsibility for teaching, uh, as well as also being as part of the sports medicine contract with College Park, and that's ultimately where I am today. So this is my third year um, as both a faculty member and team therapist with Maryland Terps. That's awesome. Um, thank you for that uh, introduction. I thought that was great. And so I guess a couple questions that came up to my mind while I was listening. Um, and I wanted to briefly talk about residency. And I know a lot of students in PT school kind of think about going down that route. And there's also um, another aspect of the financial concern that some students might have in terms of kind of balancing out the mentoring and um you know, the cost of residency. So how do you see that as someone that went through that residency experience? So the, when I came out of school, I, I knew that I was interested in a sports residency. Now that was a while ago before there were the number, you know, the volume of residencies that exist today. So there really were only a handful um, at the time in 2012. So it was hard for me to decide. I definitely weighed that question myself of, do I start looking for a first job? Do I, you know, feel that I need to immediately start earning my, you know, my income and getting, you know, my career and my life financially started um, and balancing that with, well, I feel like I do need more education and I appreciate the value of residency and what it can do. So I was sort of stuck in between. So I was loosely considering uh, the University of Delaware residency just because it's fairly local. Um, you know, I potentially could have stayed uh, living in Baltimore and commuted there. Um, but at the same time, I was also looking um, at a variety of places for my first job. And so when I interviewed with MedStar as part of my interview process and kind of their, my kind of early career plan, uh, working there, they told me they were in the process of developing their residency, that they were going to accept a cohort to go through while it was going through the accreditation process. And one of the benefits of doing the program while working there was um, 
I still had my typical full-time role, meaning I, I saw patients for, you know, a little over 40 hours a week. And essentially the residency time was on my own time. So cool. that meant that the program essentially happened. Our education hours were at 630 in the morning. Um, so every other Friday I would drive down to either uh, Northern Virginia or downtown DC and do my um, didactic portion. And then Friday afternoons and evenings after I finished my typical work week would be when I did a lot of mentoring and shadowing with other physicians, athletic trainers, physical therapists, sometimes in the clinic, sometimes on the field, sometimes in the operating room, things like that. So that was essentially kind of the best of both worlds for me because it was a full salary, um, but I was able to still get the education. So that's different. And there's not many programs that are like that at this point where um, you're still seeing patients for the full week. Most patient, most programs that are being done full time, you're seeing patients anywhere between, we'll, we'll kind of estimate about 30 to 36 hours a week. So your salary is prorated to that, but mm -hmm. then your education and mentoring and sports experiences are kind of built into your time a little bit more. That's so, right. you know, the downside of that is obviously the pay cut, um, but the weeks tend to be still long, but maybe a little bit more manageable because it's, you have the extra experiences kind of structured in. For me, the weeks were very long um, and involved, you know, pretty significant commute uh, from Baltimore to DC or Virginia. Um, you know, oftentimes that was me working a full day on Thursday, going to sleep at my parents' house, which is kind of halfway, driving, you know, out to Northern Virginia or DC early in the morning, doing my lecture, and then hustling back to the office, working a full day, and then going to do some additional sports, um, you know, field coverage and things that night, or, you know, the next day on Saturday. So it was definitely a challenge, but I knew that I was kind of getting the best of both worlds by still maintaining a full caseload. For sure. Yeah. I mean, that sounds like a lot of hard work and it, it sounds like to me that it kind of paid off liking what you do right now. And you also mentioned long days of work and I know that didn't really stop back then. And I know you were working also as a faculty as well as a PT at College Park or a faculty at um, Maryland Baltimore. So I guess if you could just describe what it's like to teach PT students and what kind of values you see in that? So I've always enjoyed working with students, um, even, you know, while I was in PT school, um, was lucky enough to be a TA for summer anatomy for the classes below me. Um, additionally, being able to do some, some tutoring for students that needed a little bit extra coaching as far as developing their study skills or helping them approach anatomy and how to prepare for the exams. So that was something I always appreciated doing. Um, after graduation from PT school, I was very active at my office, you know, interested in taking DPT students um, on their clinical affiliation. So I knew that was something I always wanted to do. And I stayed in touch with a few of my professors just to kind of keep that door open and hope that if there would be an opportunity to come back, that they would consider me and I was lucky enough that that happened. So it was definitely a passion of mine, something that I really enjoy doing. And so I'm glad I'm able to kind of include that as, as you know, a structured part of my week where I know I'm always doing it. Um, the sort of overall theme of, of teaching PT students, at least from my perspective, is I see my role as somebody who can balance teaching the students about, you know, what I personally do in the clinic and also just being responsive to where they are in the program. And so I'll often be asked questions and I'll have to find a way to answer that as well. What would I do when I go to see patients tomorrow versus how do I help you best prepare for the test that I know is coming up? And so there is this difficult balance between being a student, understanding that you have to prepare for exams and we do need you to be successful in the classroom but also knowing that there's a lot of gray area. And when we're out seeing patients, things are not always as simple as we'd like them to be. And there's a lot of, um, you know, it depends. And I know that, that that's become a cliche thing and students don't love to hear that, but the reality is that's what clinical practice is, is we've got a patient in front of us and we have to gather as much information as possible, rely on past experiences, rely on information that we've learned in school and other sources of education and, and make these decisions. So, I see my ultimate role as helping students 
you know, by sharing my clinical experience, but also doing everything I can to help prepare them in the classroom. Right. Sounds good. And um, I know our program does a really good job of mentoring or professors and faculty mentoring PT students that are in school because they match up students to faculty. And so, um, so far, my experience has been great with um, asking for help. Um, even Dr. Mike doing a podcast here with me and a bunch of other professors that I have reached out to via email. Um, they've been very responsive and answering my questions. So I do think that was a huge part of my PT school experience so far. And I, I agree with you. I think keeping that door open and um, kind of networking with the professors and asking for help that way is a great thing. And so you mentioned briefly about working with your students during the full-time clinicals. And so if you could, I don't know, a lot of people are probably curious about what exactly it is that you do at College Park, um, working with these D1 athletes. So if you could just walk us through, I guess, what your day looks like over there, now that we've talked about Baltimore. Sure. So I go down to College Park three days a week. It's typically Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And my primary role is to provide PT services for the injured student athletes. And so anybody who uh, is determined to need physical therapy, um, and that's, you know, a combination of uh, individuals after a significant injury, whether they've had surgery or not, anybody who is having any type of symptoms that's either preventing them from practice or playing uh, to the best of their ability. You know, we've got a whole medical service down there of different physicians, athletic trainers, uh, various other providers like nutrition, psychology, um, strength and conditioning. And we all work together just to try and put to, um, come up with like a kind of a holistic uh, you know, student athlete health plan. And so anybody who we determine has a need for physical therapy, whether it's because they've had an injury or they're planning to have the surgery soon. Um, myself or um, our other physical therapist will be notified that this is somebody that we'd like to get set up to work with you. And when I go down there uh, to the different athletic training rooms, um, I'll get introduced to the student athlete and I'll just put my PT hat on and we'll start our evaluation. We'll get to know them. We'll get to understand the demands of their sport, the type of injury that they've had, and then ultimately where they are and where they need to get to. And so I'll see a variety of things, whether that's been an athlete who's had a major surgery and they, they know they're not going to play this season and our goal is to get ready for next season. Uh, I might see an athlete who has an injury that they're able to be playing with, but they just know that they're not able to play at their full capacity. And so my job is to help figure out any different um, treatment approach that I can put together to get them from where they might be, which is having this lingering injury to where they can compete at their best. So um, it's definitely a fun job. It's busy. We've got a lot of student athletes. We've got a variety of teams from football to gymnastics to volleyball to softball. So it's a whole variety of upper and lower extremity injuries, spine injuries, um, things that require surgery, things that don't. Um, so it's definitely a fun job, very demanding having to jump from athlete to athlete and just figure out ways to quickly intervene um, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, put my best work out there. But it's definitely something I find rewarding. Yeah, um, it definitely sounds rewarding. And that's something that I'm looking forward to um, going into my third year and getting to experience what it's like to, you know, work as a PT as opposed to just being in the classroom. So definitely looking forward to that. And I guess if you don't mind sharing, I know not all jobs are perfect. So we have all these upsides to this job called PT and specifically where you work. But I also know that there's got to be some downsides or something that you might want to fix if you can. So if you can just think of, I don't know, just one thing that you don't mind sharing. Sure. Yeah, I think there's probably a couple worth sharing. So I think in any healthcare field, you know, the reason we do this job is because we care about patients. And similarly, when we're teaching, we do it because we care about students and, you know, their ultimate success. And, you know, that's great. And that's awesome when things are going well and when our patients are getting better and when our students are successful and they're graduating and we see them go on to do great things. And we're very emotionally invested in the success of others. And that's very rewarding and fun and something I'm passionate about. But there's also kind of a, an element to burnout that can sometimes occur when, 
you know, we, we want our patients to do well, we want our students to do well, but sometimes life gets in the way and, you know, things like what's going on right now with the pandemic and we're seeing sports get postponed and canceled. We're seeing students have their, you know, classes moved to online or, you know, just some difficult experiences are um, happening because of that. You know, it's definitely draining and challenging for me as somebody who cares about the patients, who cares about our students to know that, you know, they're, they might be frustrated with their situation. And so sometimes I need to work on being empathetic, but also, you know, maintaining, you know, kind of my own boundaries and making sure that I'm not getting so invested where it's so emotionally draining for me. So even though there are long days, which I enjoy, but they can be very taxing, especially when things are not going as well as I'd like them to be. Um, So that's something I I definitely work on. So, you know, doing things like, um, you know, paying attention to your own wellness, uh, making sure I'm making time to exercise and time for myself, time for my family. So prioritizing that um, is something that is helping me kind of keep a a good work-life balance, but that's definitely an area where I know I have struggled in the past. Gotcha. And from the experiences that I hear from other PT students and other PTs, it looks like school life balance is something that students need to figure out in school, but that aspect of figuring out your priorities and balancing your life doesn't really stop once you graduate and it just continues on. So I think that's a good note um, to remember even after graduation. And yeah, I think, so, go ahead, go ahead. I was going to say, I think that's just the reality of this type of job. You know, it's not something that you finish school and you're done. We, we aim to teach our students to be lifelong learners. And so really the, when you finish school, that's kind of just the start of this whole thing. And it, it's fun because you get to continue to challenge yourself and aim to do better each day. Uh, but it can also be very challenging and, and physically taxing uh, to, to continue to do that. And so I definitely encourage students to find strategies that work for them. Um, you know, making sure you build in time for yourself, plan out fun things to do, make sure you're planning vacations, t- planning time away to recharge yourself, because I think it's very difficult to just be go, go, go all the time without really taking these opportunities to relax and, and just kind of enjoy the fruits of your labor. So um, however, you know, you like to organize your time, I think ultimately you just have to identify what works for you and do it well. So you know, for me, that's keeping a very organized calendar. That way I'm building in rest breaks, building in times to do other things outside of work, uh, but then also building in the times for me to, you know, dedicate blocks of my day to get certain assignments done. You know, that way I can hold myself accountable and make sure I'm getting them done. Absolutely. I mean, it's a lot to juggle and you definitely need to organize your life and get your stuff together in order to do all that, sounds like. So thank you for that advice. And Speaking of advice, um, for PT students that are in PT school or even pre-PT students that are still in college that want to work in sports PT field, um, do you have any recommendations for them in terms of how to set themselves up for success later? So I think, you know, before we get too specific and think about what makes a good sports PT and how do students get there, first we have to make sure we are kind of being good PTs and good compassionate healthcare providers first. I think that no matter what setting you're in, that's kind of priority number one is you have to understand that our job is to serve others and we have to make sure we can develop that mindset. Um, When it comes to sports PT, there's a variety of topics and the reality is we'll never know everything we need to know. There's always going to be a new injury pattern or a challenging patient or something out there. So it's not about you know, being this guru or being this expert to set yourself apart. It's really just demonstrating the soft skills, the people skills to be able to adapt and help anybody that, you know, gets in front of you. Now, certainly we do need to work hard to understand the demands of an athlete, the demands of different sports, injury patterns that we're likely to see in sports PT. And so that can be everything head to toe from concussions to shoulder dislocations to ACL injuries. So we really need to be well-rounded and understanding these head to toe injury patterns. Um, And so I think that's something that we can start that process early in our career by just trying to tailor our education to those things, Um, you know, paying as much attention as possible when different types of, you know, education opportunities arise, whether that be uh, reading through journals, whether that be participating in, 
um, you know, sitting in on different lectures or presentations or shadowing different physical therapists who work with those kind of injuries or athletes. So I think the more you can just build your education um, in addition to having those soft skills, I think that's ultimately how we set ourselves up for success. So it's not just really one thing. It's just sort of the total package and having the mindset of, you know, these are my goals and I'm going to try and develop the education and the experience to ultimately be, you know, the most successful when I get there. Great. Yeah, that sounds, that sounds awesome. It's um, never easy um, to do that, but it's also important to know what you need to work on and be able to work on those things. Um, just a random question that came to my head. Do you have a favorite type of injury or I know, you know, injury is not a good thing, but I'm sure you have a certain type of patient case that you feel most confident with. So I get that question a lot and I, I really don't. And I, I, I try to come up with something and I really can't. I, I personally like variety. Um, I, I'm the type of person that if I do too much of the same thing, um, I get, a little bit bored. And so I like when things are fresh. I think that's one of my favorite things about working in the college setting is I don't have just one team assignment. I work with a little bit of everybody, which means I get to see a very diverse uh, population of students, folks from all over the world. Um, I get to see a variety of different sports. And so I spend my day working with tons of different types of injuries. And I think that's what for me ultimately keeps it fresh and fun. So I, I really don't think I have you know, one thing that I, I like to do, I, I just like to work with a variety of athletes that are enjoyable to spend time with that, that want to get better, that, that, you know, value my help and that are, you know, are willing to take the time to meet with me. Yeah, that's totally fine. I mean, I think college park is the best setting for that because you get to see, like you said, a variety of athletes. And um, so time's running out here a little bit. So let me ask you this one final question. We've kind of talked about how, the footsteps that you took, the steps you took to get here. We talked about what you're doing now. Um, Where do you see yourself in five, 10 years down the road? Do you think you'll still be teaching and working at College Park or doing something different? Uh, So I I hope I'm doing something very similar. I, I definitely enjoy what I'm doing and I hope that I can just continue to refine how we do those things and, you know, continue to improve at them. Um, I think we've got a long-term vision for our sports PT education um, at our PT program, um, different ideas for lectures and labs that we can um, build or develop. Um, you know, we are interested in developing a variety of different residency and fellowship options, some internally and some also collaborating with some of our uh, local partners. You know, we, we are aiming to grow in College Park. Um, there's a variety of new athletic facilities that are some under construction, some still in the planning stages. And so we're hoping to improve our sports medicine and sports performance services down there. And so I'm very hopeful that as the next several years go on, that a lot of what I'm doing will just continue to grow and build and I can kind of do what I'm doing, but just in hopefully um, you know, a more, a more advanced, a more efficient and refined way. Um, you know, long term, I, I also want to see myself growing as um, a faculty member, meaning getting a little bit more involved in the UMB campus, um, trying to come up with different leadership roles and ways to kind of share some of my interests, not just in our program, but around the School of Medicine and in the campus, um, doing things like getting involved in, in professional education, uh, continuing to mentor students hopefully being able to share you know continue to share my interest in sports pt and and helping a lot more students get to where they need to go in their careers i'm also interested in growing my ability to conduct some clinical research that's something that is a little bit new to me over the past few years Um, i've been involved in a couple small projects and i'm hoping that over time that those grow uh, to the point where i can do a few more different things independently like collect data, get ideas, you know, from my head out to the community and ultimately get published. So I think there's a, you know, a lot of small projects that I'm working on that I'm hoping will continue to grow. So definitely interested in growth and change, but not necessarily any, you know, major uh, changes, I would say. Sounds good. That's a lot of uh, things going on. And uh, I wish you the best of luck. Um, 
And yeah, so this was Dr. Mike. Thank you so much for your time. Everyone, thanks so much for tuning in and uh, we'll see you guys later. This was Dr. Mike. Thanks, Jen. Appreciate it. Thanks.